plan concept, the design concept, and Gimel is not only set the thing in motion, but if you were, uh, let me talk to the word balut, Gimel Lama. In paleo, they've got a Gimel shape like that and a Lama like that, and it's like this, this, the rounded, it's kind of that which rolls, and it literally means to roll like a ball. Gimel Lama also is a revolving door. The Gimel is the thing that has this action, it rolls. On the chart, I've got a number of different things that elaborates on that. But what I'm saying is, if you look at the letters as being Aleph is an ox. Here, I'll run through them for those of you who don't know. There's some that don't know them, okay. Aleph is an Aleph is an ox. Also, I'll show you briefly because that way, and I'll, and I'll use the letters that, that I draw because I think that it's easier to read if you know what the letter looks like. Aleph is an ox. There's the nose, got the eyes, got the ears, got the horns. It's an ox head. Aleph is an ox. That is a house. Well, it's a floor plan of a tent. You've got the open space, the foyer of the public area, and around the corner, you've got the private space. You've got the head, and you've got the backbone of an embryo that you get arms and, and legs to mount. It's, it's a body. It's the private space. It's a personal space. It's a house. It's a container. Bed. Gimel. It's not working. Black's hard to get off. But it isn't hard. I'll try to get color. That's why you'd be able to see it. Try the green. Gimel is a camel. There's the head of the camel and the foot of the camel. In his legs. The modern letter Gimel is got the foot, but it's like the head and the throat of the camel. Dalit is a door. Well, if you have the top half of an hourglass and the sand drops down into this part, or you can picture taking a skin of a, of a deer or an elk and sticking it up on the side of the teepee and, the, and maybe the head is lower. Dalit is the fourth letter, you think, well, wouldn't it be a square? It, it, down it also speaks of earth, and the earth is round, but you've got some primary geometrical shapes dealing with Dalit stuff, but that's another story. The point is, Dalit is a door. Hay is a window. So you figure, well, if you have a window and the, and the light's shining through, or the, you open the window and the wind blows through, these are like radiant lines, Bob is a nail or a hook. Another way that they drew it was like, like that. There's a couple other ways to draw it. It's also like a goblet that, that you can put some liquid in for blending things. If you have two pieces of wood that you want to nail together, you stick them together with a nail and it joins the two together. So it's what bonds two things together. So technically a valve can be basically like a, uh, a bridge from two banks. It's hooking two banks together. It's something that hooks something together, that's a valve. Bridging, connecting. Vav is also the sixth letter, and it's inferred, it's never said specifically that, that six is the number for man. But so you can say, well, Vav is a man, also. What's man's job? As a priest, a man is supposed to combine the affairs of heaven to the, the affairs of earth. Man is this link between the two. Zion is a weapon. Drawn like an axe. But it's not just an axe. It could be any kind of a weapon. In fact, another way to draw it in paleo is like this. It's like, what the heck is that? Well, if you pull this plowshare this direction, it'll cause these furrows in the ground. Those are the teeth that dig into the ground. Picture a whip sunk into the back of Yeshua and dragged across. There's a cut off at Zion because that's a weapon. The letter Chet is a fence. But before I go on, I'm going to tell you something about what's in this Hebrew alphabet. Now, this isn't Christian, and this isn't Jewish. This is just the Hebrew alphabet. Think of it as history. This is also known as the Phoenician alphabet. Nobody knows who the Phoenicians were. There was just some maritime shipping industry, a big commercial empire that was there, and then they disappeared. But look at what's in the letters. Aleph, as a prefix, literally means I am or I will. In fact, Elia Asher Elia, the first words on that, or the last words on there, literally means, I am that I am, or it also means, I will be what I will be. 
Because Aleph states this intention of the author, it's the silent letter, it only speaks itself or reveals itself in what it's made. Hence, you have the concept that the heavens declare the glory of Elohim who made them. He doesn't have to say anything. Who is he? We all have speculations on who he is. We really don't know who he is. We believe who he is based on this writing or this doctrine or this, this priest told us this or this great leader told us that. But nevertheless, what we have is the heavens declare his handiwork. Our consciousness was designed by him and that's enough to say this guy's pretty smart to make us as, as we are. So we can infer who he is, but he's the silent letter Aleph. So you can think of the Aleph as being representative of the eternal infinite one on the other side of the creation event, so the bet is the creation event. And then Gimel is to set the whole thing in motion, and now it speaks of the earth. Okay, so we have a story going on here. Aleph also means I will. The word spelled bet Gimel Dalet means baggage, which is clothing. But it's baggy clothing. The word Samak uh, Lamed Mem, or Samak Mem Lamed is similar which means tight-fitting or looks just like the shape. So if you're wearing spandex, your clothing looks similar to what you really look like. But if you wear bagged or baggy clothing, it's a camouflage or disguise. This word literally means camouflage or disguise. Hey means to reveal. It's the word the. When you have the word ha shem, it's the name. That letter he is simply the letter the. Ha shemayim the heavens. Ha-Mashiach, the Messiah. It's the letter Tha. Bob, if you look at that as man, Zion is a weapon, which means then to be slain or ripped open. When Pilate presented Yeshua to the crowd, he said in Latin, Ephe homo, in Behold the Man. In Hebrew, if he was speaking to a Hebrew crowd, crowd, he might have said, Hineha Ish. Or Ish, which is man, he the man, might be Hine Ishu. Hine Ishu, well, he became known in Greek as Ishu or Yeshu or Yeshua or, or Jesus. That's where Jesus came from. So he might have said, Hine Ishu or Hine Ha Ish. Behold the man. I will manifest myself in a material form, give myself a foot to come and walk the earth, concealed in the camouflage clothing that looks like a man to be slain and entombed, and a big stone rolled in front of it, and my hand of the seal that said, I did this. Well, now, who's that talking about? If this was from ancient Hebrew, this has nothing to do with Christianity nor Judaism. This isn't a biblical Judaism. This is from before 500 BC. There were no rabbis of rabbinical Judaism back then. Well, it gets kind of interesting then. Behold the man. So, the rest of the letters, Chet is a fence. Tet, they say, is a snake because it winds around. The letter Tet, if you look at the words for Tet, literally means spinning. But it also means, what do the hands on the clock do? They go all the way around, 360 degrees. It's also a full basket, which means something 100% full. 100%, 360 degrees. Yoga is a working hand that grabs a tool and makes things happen. The hand of the artist, the hand of the potter, the hand of the manufacturer. Look here for It's out of sequence, but here. Cough, technically it would be written like this. For shorthand, I just write like that. People also write it, if you're carving in, in wood, where you do grain or maybe in stone, if you're trying to cut these little lines, it'll chip. So they do it the easy way. And they, they drew it like this, which became our letter K, the letter cough. But it's the open hand, it's the palm. Lamed, shepherd's staff. It's also like a tongue, it's also a rudder. It has to do with steering. Pushing, pulling, the carrot and the stick, the incentive to teach and learn. The word lamed literally is teach and learn. As a matter of fact, aleph, literally, the word aleph is ox. It's also to domesticate or to train. It's the, your household, which is what you do with an ox. It also is the first 
and it's big and strong, and it means a thousand. Which, if you have a thousand, you have strength, but the word alf means ox. The word bet literally means house. Gimel is the word camel. Dalit is door. Technically, Dalit Lama is door. Dalit's a suffix which brings a little bit. He means the, which is to reveal. Vav is a nail or a hook, or the man nail, you might say. Zion is a weapon. In fact, Zin, Zion Yod Nun, Zin is armaments or adornments. Like if you have a family saber from the Civil War or a family musket, those are arms. Those are adorned with the ceremonial sword. Anybody uh, know about Zina, the warrior princess? Same name. The feminine form is to add a hay. The male form is to add a bob to the end of the word. Anyway, Zina. So Zion, Z Zion Yod Nun would be the closest you could say. Uh, Zion, Zayna would be the feminine form. Anyway. I'm saying that because there's a lot of English stuff that gets it straight out of Hebrew. Okay, het is literally a fence. Het is basically spinning or like this full basket. Yod literally means arm, but it also doesn't just mean your arm. It's strength or portion or your part or your share or this is where your power is. Kaf is open hand. So when Yahweh, you can read this in Hebrew, when Yahweh was speaking to Moshe, and Moshe says, show me your glory. He says, you can't see my face, but you have to see my backside. I'm going to put you in the cleft of the rock. I'm going to put, Yahweh put coffee on Moses. Coffee. He said, I'm going to put coffee on you. I'm blending Hebrew and English. Coffee is the word kaf, pei, or maybe kaf, laf, pei, yod. Kaf, kaf, pei, is the word for the open hand. My open hand is the word coffee. So he literally said, I'm going to put my hand on you. My, it, it's a cup covering hand. It's a joke. It's a, it's a yeah. yeah. <laughs> the cop is the open hand. He put his open hand on Moshe. He passed by. He took his hand off and he saw his glory. And he declared his name. And he, you know, Yahweh, you know, Yahweh, wonderful, marvelous, and all that. Uh, anyways, the point. The word Lamed is, is a shepherd's staff that means teach and learn. Mem literally is water. And here's a wave. The crashing turbulence on top and the sweeping away, the surfer would, would ride right in here. Noon is like a lightning bolt. It's also the, the, the pattern of a fish tail. If a fish is sitting there and you struggle at it, look at it.